Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on JoeChem. Okay gang, so this video is just going to be an introduction to the Ipso substitution. What it is, the conditions for it, some extra fun facts, and an example. And I want to make a different, you know, follow-up video that has like, you know, just like we're just doing Ipso substitutions. But in this one, I just want to introduce it. I want to do one solid example so we can get our feet wet, but not so long that it bores you to tears. Okay, so the Ipso substitution, what is it? So I wrote some bullet points, you know, this is more like, you know, if you don't get this the first time around, that's fine, but I wanted to like write these down somewhere so you can have them for reference later. So an Ipso substitution is when a group other than a hydrogen leaves a benzene ring. And of course, if something's leaving, you have a pretty strong bet that it's because something is attacking. And in our earlier benzene days, we did electrophilic aromatic substitution, right? We were taking things, electrophiles, lovers of negative charge, and putting them on benzene rings. Well, this time we're doing the opposite. We are doing, we're doing nucleophilic aromatic substitution. That's right, we're doing the substitution that we kind of learned when we were getting into OCHEM in the first place. So it's, you know, we're taking something negative, right? A lover of positive charge and attacking a benzene ring. And one thing to note is that this is a two-step mechanism. The first step is the late, the rate limiting step. And, and here's the most important part. We can only do Ipso substitutions when we have one or more electron withdrawing group or the parator leaving group. Okay? So this is what you're always going to look for when you're doing an Ipso substitution, right? So clearly you're gonna need some nucleophile. That will become apparent when we do our example, but I just wanna kind of illustrate the big, the big condition right here. So let's just say I had a bromine right here. And I think it's no secret that we know how to make this happen, right? We know how to take regular old benzene, put some Br2 and FeBr3 to get a leaving group on there, just to make this super concrete. Well, just to make that concrete, just so you know that, you know, we know how to do this. If you have bromine right here, something that can undergo an ipso substitution is if you had like a nitro group right there. Or for example, you had a chlorine and maybe you have a nitro group here and a sulfonyl group here, right? Because we have something, there's, there's a para relationship here, there's an ortho relationship there. What well, would it work, right? whoa, I don't know what that was, is something like this, unfortunately, right? Because this is meta. So just to give you some quick looks, this would be good for an ipso substitution. This would be good for an ipso substitution. Unfortunately, that will not fly. Or if you were even putting electron donating groups on, that won't work. Now, why is that the case, you might ask? So glad you did. Pause the video and we'll figure out why. Okay, gang, so let's dig into ipso substitutions, what makes them tick, why they work the way they work, and actually do one. Okay, so if we take a look right here, and hearkening back to the, what I, we were just talking about previously, you can clearly see that in our substrate, we have a good leaving group right here in chlorine. That could be our non-hydrogen thing to leave ben the benzene ring, right? Hence the ipso substitution. And not only that, but the other large criteria was either ortho or para, at least one, we need an electron withdrawing group. And you can see here that not only in this example, we have both ortho and para, okay? And I think you can actually see the whole deal is that through substitution, we actually displace our chlorine and we tack on our nucleophile, which here is hydroxide, right? A lover of positive charge, our nucleophile, okay? So let's figure out how this all works. So right off the bat, our rate limiting step is nucleophile comes in and attacks, and something is gonna happen. We're not, remember, this is multiple steps. We're not just going to kick this off and call it a day. What's gonna happen is we're going to add our nucleophile, and in fact, what we're gonna do is our leaving group is gonna be one of these pi bonds, okay? So I'm gonna kind of use all my area down here to my advantage. Okay, so right after we tack on our alcohol, we have a 
lone pair. And I hope you are all kind of seeing where this is going, right? A lot of this air, like benzene stuff, happens because the resonance works out a certain way, right? And sure enough, what are we going to do? I'm going to play Ring Around the Rosie. And we even saw this when we were discussing uh, putting extra substituents on phenols and making them more acidic. But if I now expand this nitro group, you can see that there's a stabilization right here, right, obviously between this very partially positive atom attached to the benzene ring, but this can also participate in resonance, right? So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna keep this going over here just to have that down. One second, I'm gonna just draw this right here. But I'm gonna go ahead and draw the resonance. Um, so well, I hope you're gonna see whatever I can draw here, I can draw down here if I were to zoom over here, okay? So right here, what I could do is I could swing these electrons and move this here, right here, forming a carbon nitrogen double bond, and I can kick these here. So much like in the previous video, this point that I'm honestly whoops, belaboring a little bit, is that in the initial nucleophilic attack, we have to create an electron pair, right? And remember, nature doesn't do stuff that causes a large amounts of instability, right? There's energy barriers. So what's going on is that we create this electron pair, but it's Although it's a charge, right, and we created instability, it is extremely delocalized, not just by the ring that it's on, but by the additional groups that are attached, right? We could draw an additional resonance structure shooting down this way. We have one, two, three, four, five different resonance structures, right? Just like we saw in the previous video. So the whole point being that I'm going to need more space. that we have all this opportunity, I'll just put crap load of resonance to stabilize new charge, okay? So this is a theme. So if, if you're feeling iffy about the resonance, get comfortable with it because it's not going anywhere. Okay, so I'm even gonna erase these so, and you can even do this if you went all the way ring around the rosy, but what's basically gonna happen is this, much like, it's an additional elimination reaction is what it is, is this swings down, we boot our good leaving group, and that's how we get our ipso substitution product. So, it's really, on the surface, add, kick up an electron pair, electron pairs up there, collapse, right, to, uh, additional elimination, and then boot off your good leaving group, but what we had to see is that this is all possible because that charge we create is so, 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 so stabilized, okay? All right, gang, so I have a lot of examples I want to do, and, oh, okay, yeah, so the one thing I wanna, the, that resonance doesn't quite work as much. What I wanna show you is let's just say we had this intermediate uh, chlorine, oxygen. Let's just say our nitro group was right here, okay? So we can't, what we can do is this, but we can't leverage, we can't ever leverage that electron withdrawing group that we put here whenever there's a meta relationship, right? Because it's like, it's just how the, the spaces are laid out, we would skip right over it, but it works out in an ortho fashion, but unfortunately, 
not a meta. So meta is a no-go. But ortho para works because the spacing allows it to the resonance to feed into the groups that you add. Okay, so again, probably belabored it, the point, but it all comes back to we create a charge because we're adding something, resonance stabilizes that charge we create, then we can collect, throw that charge back into a double bond, kick off our good leading group, and we have our ipso substitution. So I want to stop the video here and then shoot on into the next video for just ipso substitutions galore.